Next on Worcester News tonight, no school for Worcester Public School students. Could they see the same thing tomorrow with freezing cold temperatures on the way? Plus, prepping for the Super Bowl. Local businesses say the Patriots' AFC Championship victory is boosting their sales. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. After a wintry batch of weather overnight, we are now dealing with the bitter cold. How long will the freezing temperatures stick around? Meteorologist Tim Kelly has more on what we can expect in your forecast. Wind, chill, advisories and warnings tonight. We're on the colder side of two fronts. One went by last night with a quick five, seven inches of snow. And then another one this evening with a snow squall. It was 25 below zero in Chicago. We're not going to be 25 below zero. That squall line has moved to our east now. It's going off. Temperatures falling through the teens. It wasn't that bad with all the blue sky today. What a day. The worst of the snow is done, so now it is the wind and the chill. As we go through the night, that snow squall goes on. It's sort of the wave of uh, cold air coming right in here. Seven at 9 o'clock tonight at the airport. Now, downtown could still be about 11 or 12 degrees. The wind tonight is going to be less than it was with that snow squall, but we're still going to be gusting past 30 miles per hour. So 1130, we're going below zero here at midnight. It's not record cold, and in fact, it does not look as cold as last Monday now, even though we're going to start at a few degrees below zero. Remember last Monday, we were six below zero, and the high temperature was only one. So we're going to be about 5 to 11 degrees warmer than that tomorrow afternoon, about 10 degrees at the airport, a little warmer in the lower elevations, good amount of sunshine. The wind is going to stay up, and then it gets a lot warmer for a really nice weekend forecast coming up. And this morning's snow and cold temperatures meant no school for Worcester Public School students. Many spent the day outdoors enjoying winter activities, but could tomorrow be a different story? Our Chandler Walsh joins us live now with more. Chandler. Olivia, Worcester Public School students can sleep in again tomorrow. The district announcing a two hour delay because of freezing temperatures. As you can see on this sign, it's in the 20s where we are here in Worcester, but forecasted wind chills in the negatives could pose some problems tomorrow. These Worcester school kids aren't complaining about their snow day. No school! They spent the afternoon sledding at Burncoat Park on the fresh few inches of powder. I'm happy our moms bring us here because we're having a lot of fun. We got to um, go in the snow and um, sled, but my two older brothers have to shovel. <laughs> Some, like sixth grader Amelia Shaughnessy, chipped in shoveling to help their parents, adding some fun on the side. I was really excited because I had a test today. School was canceled due to the weather, but with many bare streets, parents say it was a pleasant surprise. Frigid temperatures are expected Thursday, which could affect a second day. It looks like maybe a, you know, a delay might make sense, um, but it's nice. So far, it looks like we might be getting out early for the summer. So I'd like to stick with that. The colder weather is welcome news to David Carrier. This week, the DPW announced skating is safe on some city ponds. Carrier was ice fishing at Elm Park Wednesday and agrees. Today, it's, it's about five and a half inches, which technically can support uh, an average sized man with a snowmobile. He says he won't be back tomorrow because the weather could freeze the fish, but forecasted wind chills in the negatives doesn't mean he'll stay inside. I'm an outdoors guy. I, I don't stay in. I'll be out doing something. I might be out hiking up on that hill tomorrow. The wind and snow has been picking up in the past 10 minutes out here. The city is extending their parking ban. It will be in effect overnight. Live in Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. And the town of Auburn opening their senior center to everyone tomorrow. In a tweet, the town says the center will be a warming station due to the extremely cold temperatures we are expected to see. The senior center on Goddard Drive will be open for any resident in need of a place to stay. In Worcester, an Android phone app allows people to find access to places for things like food and clothing and housing and shelter. The app, called Stigma Free Worcester, uses your location to find places closest to you, and you can sort them by the services they offer, the insurance they accept, and when they are open. The app was developed by WPI students in collaboration with the City of Worcester's Department of Health and Human Services. 
Declaring it a big victory for workers in Worcester, a contractor will have to pay in a case of wage theft. Worcester's Carpenters Union spent months rallying to raise awareness their workers weren't being paid properly at a high profile construction project in the city's downtown. And today they got the answer they were hoping for. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us now with more. Brittany. Olivia, a judge ordered a subcontractor to pay more than $150,000 to carpenters in Worcester. The union says this is a major win for their workers. These luxury apartments and they couldn't pay workers. A settlement is reached almost two years after carpenters signed complaints over wage theft while working on a building in downtown Worcester. A subcontractor for 145 Front Street has to pay $158,000 in back pay to 50 employees. It's a victory for us, a victory for workers. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it's also the, it's against the law. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, PMB Partitions Inc. paid workers normal pay when they worked overtime. Carpenters Local 336 says the majority of theft victims were Latino. Because they don't speak English, they think they're undocumented and then they can exploit that. They, they see that as weakness and they actually even uh, threaten them that they're going to call ice on them or something. 145 Front Street now houses luxury apartments and commercial space. Carpenters Local 336 business manager David Manasian says these carpenters are helping with the city's renaissance and deserve better. People see this Worcester renaissance, right? I mean, you look around us and this downtown has changed for the better. But when people are building it and they're, and they're getting wage theft, there's tax fraud, there's insurance fraud, who is this renaissance for? Throughout the process, the Worcester Carpenters Union held rallies downtown. Nation says it sent a powerful message to the developers and the city. To show that people care about this, that it's a major issue. But I think other developers, other contractors, and our city leaders need to understand as well that people are upset. When they're working and they're separated like this. They ain't got no power, they ain't got no say. And they get together, they become a fist, and that becomes power. And that's what we are. And we did reach out to PNB partitions, but they declined to comment. Live in the studio, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A crash on West Boylston Street in Worcester blocks a portion of the road Wednesday. It happened around noon near Lou Rock's Diner. It appears a vehicle crashed into a utility pole, snapping it in half. Wires were hanging on the ground as crews worked to clean up the mess. It's unclear what caused the crash at this time. A fifth destination will soon be taking off from the Worcester Regional Airport, and you can already book a flight. Tickets are now on sale to fly from Worcester to Detroit on Delta. Service begins August 2nd, 2019. As of right now, flights leave Worcester at 6 a.m. and arrive in Detroit at 7.50 a.m. And flights depart Michigan at 8.10 p.m. and arrive in Worcester at 9.50 p.m. Delta Airlines is the third major airline to add service since Massport took over ownership of the airport. Super Bowl 53 is just days away and some local businesses are already feeling the effects while others are hoping they win to help boost their production sales. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now to explain. Roslyn. Olivia, some businesses see a big boost in sales when the Patriots make it to the Super Bowl and one printing company is ready to go if they win. The Patriots will play in Super Bowl 53 on Sunday, and the team's trip to the big game is a big win for businesses in the Worcester area like Percy's TV and Appliance. A lot of people coming in here uh, buying a lot of nice high-end TVs. Sales manager Richard Lazier says they've sold dozens of TVs to people eager to watch the game on a big screen. He says when the Patriots make it to the Super Bowl, sales go up. The excitement is in the air. People come in and they spend, you know, Good money on TVs. One off apparel in West Boylston prints licensed sports gear. Owner Jeff Lavin says they can't print the championship shirts yet, but have 12,000 of them on pallets ready to go. I hate to look at it because it's, it's, you know, I don't know if I call it bad luck, but, you know, it says champions. It says winning, you know, the Super Bowl. It's, it's tough to look at. They will have 25 to 30 people working 30 minutes after the game if the Patriots win, and the shirts will be shipped out to local retail stores. It's exciting. The guys come in, and um, everybody's pretty jacked up from a big win. Lavin says they printed shirts for the Boston Red Sox World Series championship and for past Patriots wins. He says when it comes to winning teams, there's no better place than New England. You can't ask for better, you know, really any better market in the country. 
If the Patriots don't win, Lavin says the blank t-shirts will be sent to LA. So Olivia, hopefully that doesn't happen. Roslyn Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. That's for sure. Thank you, Roslyn. And fans in Massachusetts have a lot of creative ways to show their Patriots pride. In Foxborough, clever signs covering the town common are turning heads. Abby Nascota explains. The Super Bowl plays may happen on a field in Atlanta, but the word play is already underway on this field in Foxborough. Three years experience and three generations. Coming up with clever lines to line the town common has become a tradition for Paul Farmer and his family. And in his workshop, we got a first look at what's making the final cut. As soon as the playoff game, they won it, right away we started brainstorming. From a spin on Beat LA. Play on the na 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 goodbye song. To Belichick being Belichick. This is typical Bill in the media, so. Even Pat the Patriot gets his own sign after this. <laughs> and if you're wondering, yes, the Ram references are coming. Seems like it's always an animal we have to reproduce, though. We're cooking a bird or riding a ram. Farmer's just being careful after some of last year's jokes had him playing defense. I've had my, my wrist slapped a couple times already. Still, that doesn't stop the pride on display all over Foxborough. Most of Farmer's signs you can see from your car, like this reference to Brady's chant at the send-off rally. We're still here! But don't forget to look closely, too, because the wordplay continues right down to the names of the plays on Brady's wrist. There's one nice popular one here that you might <laughs> like, NBC 10. There you go, Abby. Tribute to you. Yeah, hopefully that is the game winning play. But whatever happens, you can expect to see a lot more of these signs for the town pep rally here on Saturday in Foxborough. I'm Abby Nesgo to Worcester News tonight. And while it may seem most of the nation is rooting against the Patriots, we do have Ozzy on our side. The 680 pound grizzly bear lives at Zoo Montana. And as you can see, he picked the Patriots to take down the Rams in Super Bowl 53. Ozzy, who's eating great pies, by the way, has nailed five of his last six super picks. So there you have it. Ozzy, the grizzly bear, says the Patriots are going to win. And honestly, who would want to argue with him?